And so it just shows some guys, they have the genetics, they can absorb and use everything. Other people take 2000 milligrams of test a week, they feel like garbage. Coach Greg, and in today's video, Larry Wheels reveals his PD cycle, and you're not going to believe just how massive it was. I was taking 2,000 milligrams of tests at one, one point uh, for eight weeks, and I developed no gynecomastia, um, no symptoms of converting into estrogen. And so you can't just keep blasting more. It's not a linear progression. If you took 500 milligrams a week and made major gains, 10 pounds of muscle in eight weeks, you're not gonna get four times that by taking 2,000 milligrams. Many people, they overestimate and just assume, if I only took more, I would get this much bigger. There's quite literally a ceiling to testosterone, and if you take too much, it will in fact hinder your gains. Too much of a good thing, it actually makes it worse. And so if you take 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, there comes a time when that higher dose comes with so many unwanted side effects that it actually hinders your progress. Less is more, and if you're taking enough steroids that it causes unwanted side effects, well, you really need to lower your dose. But I think I'm at the time, and yet everything was in the red. Okay, okay. and your estrogen was still not skyrocketing. It was not skyrocketing. Wow, no, wow. Let's see, this is very different, for example, from user to user. Joe Linder, on the other hand, he took 500 milligrams a week, and he would develop gynecomastia. And so he's shocked. How did you take 2000 milligrams and not get all these negative sides? As you can see, it all boils down to genetics. But just because Larry never developed gyno taking 2000 milligrams a week, does that mean it's safe? No, of course not. He got his blood work done, all the markers in the red. That's bad. When it's in the red, it's flagged and says, this is not good. You need to do something about it. So I have to go back in my report to see exactly what it was, but I did get my blood work at the time and yet everything was in the red. Okay, okay. and your estrogen was still not skyrocketing. It was not skyrocketing. Wow, no, wow. And so taking 2000 milligrams a week, your blood pressure's through the roof, your HDL's in the tank, LDL's highly elevated, causing a really skewed HDL to LDL ratio. And what that can do is increase stroke risk, heart attacks, and so on. And these of course are not the only risks to concern yourself with. Liver, kidneys, possibly developing cancer. These are things you really need to ask yourself, is it worth it? Right, exactly. I said I lost between 10 to as much as 20% mm -hmm. on like my bench, for example. And so Larry has only been off these cycles for approximately seven to eight weeks, and he's already lost 10 to 20% of his strength. And it's only been eight weeks. Imagine after a few years. When I was competing in bodybuilding, it was almost mandatory that I was taking insulin. So I remember when I started working with my coach. Mandatory that he had to take insulin. And listen, regardless of if your coach wants you to do something or not, it comes down to you. If you're an athlete, I don't care if it's male or female, and a coach says, I want you to take this, you need to take this, you have every right to say no. Get a second opinion. You don't have to do exactly what a coach is telling you. He prescribed me insulin and growth hormone. I believe it was pre and post work that I was taking insulin, about eight to 16 units. And so think of this. 8 to 16 IUs of insulin before and after training every single day. And listen, that is a lot. How many of you have taken insulin? 8 to 16 IUs, that is a tremendous amount. And many people are prescribed to go start out slow. You know, just start with five units. That is a lot. And Larry, he's always shredded, and he did this while dieting for a bodybuilding competition. When you're dieting, you're in a calorie deficit. You're eating a lot fewer calories, you have less energy, you have less glucose, less sugar. When injecting insulin, your body needs those carbs. You can go hypo, and you quite literally can fall into a coma. You can- oh. There's only two things I've ever taken that gave me a truly skin-splitting pump and that would be insulin and IGF-1. And listen, if you want to get a great pump and you want to be natural, don't go out and inject insulin or take IGF-1, which is very expensive. Pre-pump. You can quite literally take this safely every single day, and I guarantee it will make a difference. You'll take this, you get a better pump, and that should be enough. Growth hormone, I've taken it by itself, I couldn't tell you who did anything at all. And as you expected, Larry also took growth hormone, but what he says is it was underwhelming. It didn't make a huge difference. 
He never saw massive transformations in size and strength. And so he says it's likely overrated. I 100% agree with this statement. Most people are thinking the reason they're not huge, that they're not as big as all these bodybuilders is because they're not taking the same drugs. Oh, if I were on steroids, I'd be way bigger than you. The only reason I don't look amazing is because I'm natural. If you don't look amazing as a natty, you're not gonna look amazing on PDs. Trust me, you need to have amazing genetics plus take PDs to become as big as an open class IPV pro. And so this is what's gonna happen. If you ever decide to take steroids, you're gonna gain a bunch of muscle, probably less than you think, maybe 10 or 20 pounds of muscle. Then you're gonna say, oh, the reason I'm not as big as you is because, oh, I wasn't taking growth hormone. You take growth hormone, gain five more pounds. Oh, it must be IGF-1, you gain another five. Oh, it must have been that insulin. You gain 10 pounds, mostly water. Before you know it, your gut's hanging out, people saying you have a bubble gut, your jaw changes, you grow a larger forehead, and you're thinking, well, what is the secret? Oh, I must not have the right coach, or I'm not bulking hard enough, I'm not force feeding enough. What else do you need to do? Listen, you don't have the genetics, that is why you're not amazing. You train hard, you train smart, you do it without peas, and become the best version of yourself that you can possibly be. I'm using this six months, you know, I don't find any difference at all with this stuff, like for real men. And then it's expensive, That's then right. you don't know if you get real stuff, and it's a big, big struggle. So for the majority of people out there who are watching this video right now, I can personally say, bro, you probably don't need any GH in your life, man. Exactly. If you think you need GH, it's going to be the holy grail for fat loss and cause all these amazing things to happen. It's not. And so if you think you can just take growth hormone that you're going to lose 20 pounds, you're going to look amazing, you are not. Like you take five units pre and you take five units post, but make sure that you have enough carbs but then I'm always kind of dieting, right? So I'm, I'm like, okay, so how am I doing this? I'm taking the insulin, then I go to the gym, bro. I'm having my intra-workout shake, but I'm doing three, four sets too much in between. I forget to drink, carbs drop too low, blood sugar, boom. I'm getting all sweaty and- Exactly, and Joe is well over 200 pounds. He's got a lot of experience in the gym. And even with five IUs, he was going hypo in the gym, feeling like garbage, getting the sweats. It's not good, it's not worth it. I use it twice, I believe. After the second time, I just couldn't deal with going hypo and I was on point. I always made sure I had sugar in my car just as an emergency. I had little candy bars. I had fast acting sugars and drinks up in the car just as a precaution. In, in my bedroom, I had sugar everywhere in the house. I had sugar just in case and still would go hypo regardless. And listen, Larry's only done a few cycles with insulin. It just wasn't worth it. The going hypo, the worrying about having to eat enough carbs, it was too dangerous even for Larry Wheels. And he's trying to be the strongest man in the world. And so if one of the strongest guys in the world, one of the most freakiest human beings we've ever met, doesn't take it, doesn't need it, then why do you think you need it? You of all people, you were just trying to look aesthetic in the gym. And so Larry's now saying that the pump he got from taking insulin and IGF-1, it was unbelievable, unlike anything he'd ever experienced, including trend. And he says, I can't imagine anyone getting to the top level without using this. And perhaps he's right. Perhaps you can't get to that top level, but is it really worth the risks? And that size that he's talking about, all that extra mass, guess what? It's mostly water. Some people are taking insulin, IGF growth hormone. They're saying, yeah, but I put 10 pounds on in a week. If it's 10 pounds in a week, you know it can't all be muscle. Perhaps there's some water in there, but when you're gaining that amount of weight that quickly, it's not all rock solid muscle. Perhaps you're up 20 pounds on a cycle, but when you diet down and when you get up on stage in the same exact condition as you were last, are you really up 20 pounds? Guaranteed you're not. Half the weight you're putting on when you're doing insulin and so on, it's not muscle, it's water. Look at D-ball. D-ball, oftentimes people are gonna gain 10 or 20 pounds on a cycle. Do you really think it's 10 or 20 pounds of muscle? Well, I'll tell you how you're gonna find out. When you go off and you stop and it's out of your system and you start peeing all that water out and three months later you notice you're only up five pounds from where you started, that is how much muscle you put on. Not the amount of weight you gain while taking it. Oftentimes I've done cycles in the past and the scale weight jumps up really quickly, perhaps 10 pounds in a matter of weeks, but it's mostly water weight. Your stomach is more bloated, you don't look as good. And I'm being 100% honest that when I go off steroids, when I stop the cycle, I look better. Not as big, but more dry, more lean, more cut, less bloat in the face. And so if you're trying to look aesthetic, to look better, to look lean, 
and you're on a massive steroid cycle, you're gonna look bigger, but not necessarily better. I know when all the top pros are likely using it. So how can you get to where they're at without it, right? When mm -hmm. it's going around in the community, everyone knows about it, likely nearly everyone's using it because it does make dramatic difference. It's like natural, TRT, on cycle, IGF and insulin. And so Larry is describing the progression from being a natural athlete to the most enhanced you could be. And my personal opinion is he's describing the law of diminished returns. When you're natural, you make as many gains as you can and after a while, you can't grow anymore. The next step after that, of which you can make the most gains, would be simply to take HRT, low doses that can make a significant change in your body. You could perhaps put on 10 pounds or more muscle just from taking HRT. And so oftentimes people will take HRT or perhaps they're using SARMs and they're getting this kind of gains, 10 pounds or more muscle and they're thinking, this is amazing, but wait till I do a real cycle. I'll probably put on 50 pounds of muscle. Only to find out that they take 10 times more doses, perhaps 2,000 milligrams of tests as Larry did, but they're not making that much changes. A little goes a long way and you don't get dramatic differences by upping the doses. If that were the case, all we need to do is take massive steroid doses and we'd all get absolutely huge. My advice, be happy with what you have. Go for small improvements. Don't think I need to be the best in the world because even if you get to that point, you become the Mr. Olympia champion, will you really be satisfied? Of course not. We're never satisfied. We're always searching to be better than we are. If you could break the world record in the bench press, do 900 pounds, don't you think your next goal will be a thousand? You'll never be satisfied. So my advice, love who you are and realize this is just an exterior shell of who we are and what's on the inside quite literally more important than the exterior shell we're walking around in. Even Larry Wheels, Joe Aesthetics, look at these guys, but are they satisfied? Joe would love to have bigger arms. I need to inject here, I need to inject there. I need to be bigger. I need to be more shredded. Look at how lean Joe is. Yet, you think he doesn't have to suffer to get this way? Imagine the lengths of dieting, training he has to go through to maintain a physique that looks just as good as this. These are the most important things where you should focus on. These two things, training, nutrition, and sleep. And so aside from taking natural supplements, as you've seen in the back, of which you can use code GREG to get 10% off, go to htltsups.com. Simply train harder than last time, lift weights, do your entire body twice a week, get in 150 minutes of cardio a week, and be all that you can be. But don't think you need to become more than you're actually capable of being. You're never gonna be happy, and so stop taking risks with your health. It's simply not worth it. When I was competing, I wanted to be at the highest level. And Larry, he wanted to be the best in the world, and his gift was strength. And so powerlifting and strongman, that is what he's going for. And he realizes he needs, as in he has to use these drugs if he wants to compete with the best of the best. There's no way as a natural athlete you can beat and outlift the best guys in the world with the best genetics who are also using PDs. And so when Larry takes 2,000 milligrams of test a week and uses trend, orals, growth hormone, insulin, IGF-1, bulks, cuts, does it all, it's because that's his chosen path. He wants to be the best. He knows it's endangering his health and he was willing to take that risk, but only for 10 years. As if 10 years isn't enough, but he's only on 175 milligrams of HRT now. He realizes if he continues to do this, he's going to dramatically increase his risk of dying, gonna die an earlier death, and so is it really worth it? He's done his thing, he's pushed as far as he can, and so why continue? And so hopefully you learned a lot from this video. Guys are being open and honest. Larry Wheels, Joe Aesthetics. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm, watch those two loops, and of course you can get my training books, the cookbooks, the circle diet book, all these HTLT supplements. Use code GREG to get 10% off. Click the link in the description. And until next time, I am out.